Hi folks, this is uh, Kirk Almighty here, and this is a, a different multiplayer series I have started with uh, Mike, uh, aka Vince McMahon over there on the uh, the Steam forums. Uh, I'd played a short series of Mike already, and uh, and uh, it was kind of a I think really a tester for Mike. Mike doesn't have a lot of PBM experience. He's pretty new to the game. So we start a new game. I let him establish all the parameters on this game. And I wasn't sure I was even going to film this one. And even though I'm filming it or I'm recording it right now, I'm not even sure I'm going to put it up. But but it's getting interesting, so I started thinking I might. I haven't gone through and given my generals any historical names or anything yet because I really just wasn't sure I was even going to do anything with this one. Now the parameters on this game was that uh, we have a 10 year, or excuse me, probably I guess you say 12, 12 turn diplomatic block which would be one year. So I believe February 1st, 1933 is when uh, war can be declared. So we are about oh, seven or eight turns into it right now I would say. Um, more than halfway there um, and I'd been oh the other thing that uh, Mike did is he went through and he adjusted the political points so we had each had 2,000 starting off uh, I'm not accustomed to having that much time to build up before going into combat or having that many PPs at my disposal so uh, I struggled a little at first coming up with uh, how exactly I wanted to do that and what kind of game plan I wanted to have. But uh, I have, I have, uh, after the over, over these last few turns, I've slowly been developing a game plan. A couple of things I knew for sure was that looking at this terrain, there's so much jungle and forest, and it, it just, and most of the combat is going to be centered on this central island here. Uh, you've got all this jungle and forest and terrain here that's really kind of neutral. Like swamp is okay for SMG or rifle. It's kind of neutral. It hurts both of them equally. Um, so I, I was certain that I wanted to go primarily with SMG on my armies, uh, which I have. I'm building up, also I spent a lot of the PPs, the majority of them, actually on technology. I mean, I've got factories built. I built my factories on mainly on the central island because the logistics of getting things moved from this island to that island complicates things. Um, most of the production on this island right now is going to supplies and additional political points. Now, this one is able to move things pretty good over here to my central HQ which is basically this island supreme HQ. Um, right now I have two gun factories, two aircraft factories built. I've more or less come up with an idea of what my strategy is going to be now on this island. I'm going to focus on extremely heavy infantry units. Uh, the focal point of these, and I, and I unfortunately this turn I actually had moved these units up a little here, towards the border because I wanted to get some intelligence. I actually used fighters to get the intelligence from these units, which I kind of wish I hadn't because I think I may have just tipped my hand a little to my opponent by doing that because now he can see, I'm guessing he's going to be able to see at least enough of these units to see these. I dedicated a lot of resource research towards getting Infantry Gun 4. Uh, infantry Gun 4 is as you know already, or if you don't, if you haven't really played around with infantry guns too much, beyond the first level, once you get to level two, they basically also uh, are um, they have a dual role almost. Almost, they're not only just a, a support weapon like a mortar, but they actually double as a short range artillery, a light artillery piece. They have ranged attack. Well, at level four. And I looked at the combat stats on level four, and this is part of the reason I said do this. I mean, if you if you got the you know the political points to do it, I mean, I was like, no, nah, I'm going to do it because this is going to be this is going to be my hammer. This is how I'm going to beat him out of these trees between the SMGs and these infantry guns. These infantry guns have powerful stats. 
at level four. Look at that infantry attack number on level four. Okay. Look at its armor numbers on level four. It's basically doubling is a uh, is is a anti armor anti tank gun too. I mean it's it's powerful. It's stronger in attack than anti anti tank gun, and not as powerful in defense, but pretty tough. Has double the hit points, or maybe even more. Has about double the hit points of your typical anti tank gun too. So it's not only is it awesome against infantry, it's pretty good against armor as well. And it fares well as an artillery piece. These are its artillery attack numbers. It only has a range of one. But compare these artillery attack guns to a standard artillery piece. You know, they're not that they're not that far off. At level four, it's pounding the enemy almost as hard as your standard artillery piece. And I've got two of these in every single unit out here. I'm going to have field artillery too back in this, but you know, like when I move up and I don't have enough action points to attack any of these guys, I'll have action points left where these infantry guns will be able to just pound on these guys. I'm going to be able to pound on his entire line everywhere as I'm moving in here with these guys constantly, along with field artillery behind him. I'm just, I, like I said, they're the hammer I'm going to use to just pound my way through his line because this is extremely rugged, very defensible terrain. Not very good for armor at all. I see my opponent actually did build a tank factory over here. I don't really worry too much about his tanks. I think I'm going to be able to beat them back too. So my focus is on extremely heavy infantry and air power. Air power is not going to be held back much by this terrain. It's going to be difficult to do as much damage on these units sitting in this, I don't know, under this good cover of these trees. But I'm going to put some focus on air power. More particularly, I'm going to focus on, and I just started the construction of, these guys right here. Strategic Bombers. And I upgraded these to level 3. Let's, uh, oh, here, let's go look at this. Let me show you something here now. We'll look at this. Level 3 Strategic Bombers. I haven't upgraded to 4 yet. Let's just look at the 3. Here I am. Okay, they're going to have a, a range of, I'm guessing, approximately 13 to 14 hexes, something like that, because they have reduced movement costs at this level. Uh, they have 50% additional hit points, which is going to make them a little bit, uh, be able to defend a little bit more against enemy fighters. They do 100% more damage. It's going to be double damage. I'm going to build some, uh, I haven't built them yet. I actually kind of wait until the end. Because I don't want to tip my hand too much. I'm going to build a couple air bases up close. Maybe one here, one here. And I'm going to be able to reach out and I'm going to be able to hit everything he's got back here with strategic bombers. It don't matter what it is, I'm going to be able to hit it with strategic bombers. I'll give him a light fighter escort because I've upgraded my fighters too. Right now they're at level 2. I'm going to upgrade them to level 3. Uh, partially for an air defense, but also because they're going to, at level 3, they're going to have. Uh, good range. They're gonna have a range of 12. So now let's say from I, I've already calculated out like from an airbase here. Let's see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'd be able to reach that from an airbase right here with strategic bombers with fighter escort. So I should be able to just literally just pound him everywhere here. Uh, I should be able to knock out. I, I don't know if these things are destructible, these factories. If they're destructible, I should be able to knock them out too. If nothing else, I'll be able to you know, beat them down so that they can't really produce much. Let's see, are, are these factories destructible here? What's it say here? Location. Here. No, I guess they're indestructible here by default, but... I'm still going to be able to pound them down when they're not going to be able to produce anything. I'm just going to be able to move around here and just pound them, pound them everywhere. I'm going to want, say, by the time the game starts, maybe at least three, three units of strategic bombers, probably four to six strategic bombers in each unit with uh, either four or six fighters, depending on how it goes, or maybe just four fighters as an escort. And uh, so... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna unload on them right from the beginning. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start to cut off 
his reinforcements and anything he can build here. So he has to deal with the logistics of getting things from this island and this island over to there. Because these guys are going to, their production is going to drop significantly. And then I'm just going to pow my way through the woods here with artillery and these infantry guns. This is my plan right now. And I'm starting to feel pretty confident about it. And the parameters with which I had to start this really made it, made me have to think about a good game plan. I think I got one. And it's really sounding like it's going to be a very interesting game because, because of these parameters. So uh, because of that, I think I may actually record this and put this game up. But with that, I'm going to leave the video here because we're getting a little long now. I try to keep them 10 minutes or less in these series now. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode.